escaping. Okay guys, I'm heading into one of my favorite stores in San Diego and it's not a very big one, but it's the one that I like most because it is geared towards aquascaping. This is Pet Zone Tropical Fish. This is here in Claremont Mesa. And like I said, their specialty is aquascaping. So I gotta open the right door. See, it's all aquascape as you walk in. Here they show a bunch of different options. And different ideas, just so like a smaller version of ADA. Or ADG in Texas or ADA in Japan. And the owner, Roger, has been inspired by those people. So he's passed on his knowledge and his passion to all the employees that work here. If you guys don't know what this is, this is a dry start. And uh, this dry start tank has some hygrophila chai right there, and some calitricoides. And uh, I'm not 100% sure what that is, but that's like the dwarf version. Um, got some bakupa, it looks like in the middle, mini. And some moss on this rock here in the Dragonstone. But they're using a Kessel A80. So, can't wait to see this one get filled with water. Usually it goes through a little time of adjustment as the water comes in. But this is a good way to establish the root systems of these plants. You can only keep them going like this if you have CO2. So, that might be Gradiola there, but let's see. I'm not sure. So as you can see, they have their aisles beautifully set up. It's a smaller store, not a lot of square footage in here, so there's gonna be three levels of aquariums. They have drains in every aquarium. Um, some of them have hang on the back filters. Actually, a lot of them do. But they're also complemented with sponge filters, and this one here and a few of the other ones have these um, powerhead driven sponge filters. I think that's just for clarifying the water. Maybe they move it around. But, um, a lot of different species in this store. Bamboo shrimp, always nice to see. They're filter feeders. They use these feather like appendages at the front to catch particles of food. And they don't bother fish, they don't bother smaller shrimp. And they tend to stay out in the open, so they're not as hidden as some of the other giant shrimp. There's some beautiful platinum angels. Look at that platinum. They have the blue hues in them. I think that's gorgeous. These are a very nice shaped fish too, so you don't see a lot of deformed fish here. These are well bred. Some scissor tail rasboras. That's a fish that's kind of not seen a lot in the hobby anymore. Everybody wants Remios. Some of my favorite little invertebrates are the Geosarma. These are vampire crabs. They're really popular now for uh, vivariums and paludariums. So they walk around and they don't really damage the plants. There's one inside the cave there. Speaking of rummy nose, there's some nice rummy nose right there. They make a great school. They have their flag tails and bright red nose. There's a couple of species that are called rummy nose tetras, but I think these are Hemigramus blaheri. These are white clouds. Tanictes albanubis, I believe. There's now like three or four species of Tanictes. There used to only be one, but they determined that the different color morphs were actually different species. And the sad thing is the common one, the Tanictes albanubis, which is very well established in the hobby and very inexpensive, is actually almost, if not already, extinct in the wild. So think about that before you treat them like they're nothing. Just because they're inexpensive doesn't mean they're not important. Easy to breed, easy to keep, they don't need heaters. They can take a wide range of temperatures and they don't need special water. 
blue snakeskin grommies, the bubble peeing guy. <laughs> Those are good looking grommies here. There's also a Hellastoma in there, I think. It's a giant grommie, I don't quite know. So if you're gonna buy one of these, make sure you have lots of room for this. If you want a larger alternative to the rummy nose, the Denison Bark is a really nice fish that can reach about four inches has the same color pattern but it also has a black stripe down the middle. These are also getting really rare in the wild but luckily they're well established in the hobby. For the native fish enthusiasts we have the North American Florida flagfish, Jordanella floridae. We catch a lot of these out there in Florida and uh, they make great aquarium pets. You can also put them in your ponds of course because they can tolerate a wide range of temperature down into the 40s and they breed pretty easy if you give them a lot of plants everyone loves coolie loaches the coolie loaches don't like coming out so they like to hide so if you want to see them you got to make sure you get lots of them I'll be painting some coolie loaches hopefully you guys like it so I'm looking at these Emperor Tetras, and these are fairly large ones. Real nice specimens, big males right there with the blue eyes, the black stripe. But as I observed a little closer, then I noticed there was a different species in here. You see that one right there in the back by the pipe? It's a different species of Emperor Tetra. So there's about five or six different fish that are considered Emperor Tetras. Of course, you got your staples, the long fin, albino, blue-eyed, bushy nose. There's bolder ones in here, and there's ones that tend to be more white. They come in that leucistic uh, white, ivory white sometimes. But these ones here are more of the gold ones. All look great, especially when they're really big. They do a great job eating algae, inexpensive and easy to keep. Get along with everything, too. They've got a good selection of corridors here. These are albino Corydoras aeneas, and then they have these black coolie loaches, which are actually a different genus, I believe. They're not Pangeo, but um, they're almost all black. Not really black, like a brownish, grayish brown. And there's a Pandacori in here. Lots of little snails. These are not your traditional MTS. As you can see, they have a thicker body. This is a different type of trumpet snail. Trumpet snails are not necessarily bad. They can clog your filters and become annoying, but they tend to eat lots of excess food, so they'll really explode their population when there's a lot of food left in the tank. What store isn't complete without live bears? These are some of my favorite sword tails. These are brick red or bright orange sword tails. These are actually albino, so if you can see, they have red eyes. Very good looking. There's some males that are obvious in here, and then there's some females. This looks like a male that's transforming. So he's having a tussle. The females have a triangular bottom fin, the anal fin, and then the males, as you can see, they have that spiked anal fin, which is converted into a gonopodium. They have a nice selection of quality discus here. Good colors, good form, good shape, nice and healthy, thick bodies, bright eyes. They look great. Don't get in a discus unless you're willing to do all the necessary things like have the proper water parameters, keep them warm, keep them in a large tank. It's interesting to have this like super sail tank, sail table. So we've got some uh, marked down plants here and tissue cultures. Some clearance tissue cultures, those have really good prices there. And then these mosses and stuff in bags. So I might have to pick some of that up because I'm doing some tanks. So yeah, I'll pick a couple of these up. So let's see, I'll probably get some flame moss and maybe some java. We'll see. And let's find some Christmas. How about Christmas? Christmas moss. So Christmas moss, it grows kind of like little Christmas trees. And flame moss has these little squiggly... Um, branches that shoot upward. So this used to be a big aquascape, but now it is a tank with a bunch of cultures in it. 
So they sell a lot of different types of plants here, and some of them are pretty rare. Uh, one of my favorites right there, Starogyne. Um, that's the other ribbons. And then there's Hygrophila pinatophyta, Alternanthera rhinicae mini, Eleocaris acicularis mini, that's a great grass plant. Some chai, some rare stuff here. Pink plant. Hygrophila lancia, that's a really nice sharp bladed plant. And uh, you know, it's kind of artfully set up in here, so it's almost like an aquascape of cultures. <laughs> One thing that it's really important that this store is here is because they provide all the different kinds of aquascaping stone. Uh, see dragon stones, uh, pagoda stones, sandstones, lots of wood, spider wood. Wolf stones. They even have some of the more expensive stones. There's obsidian, zebra stone, they call it. So there's all different kinds. And then, of course, they are one of the specialty dealers that carries all the UNS rimless tanks. But apart from just the UNS, they also have other brands. So they have these curved front ones here. Bending. Not sure what brand, what brand is that? Uh, Aqua World. Aqua World, okay, so they have Aqua World, but uh, I think I really like the UNS tanks. I'm a little bit partial because I have half of the UNS tanks on my own. And then, I don't know what this is. Crab Aqua. Crab Aqua. <laughs> so they have a bunch of different companies from Asia. Asia is the one that, this is the place that mostly makes the rimless tanks. But UNS is located in Los Angeles, and uh, I'll do a video up there, guys, and you guys can watch that later. They also have these duas, which are really nice. They had these at ADG. We saw some of those nice paludariums. Um, they love the terrarium style. This is a glass, like a front opening. You see the hinge here on the corner? It's a front opening type of tank. Let me see if they have one set up. And of course, you can get your own PP guy. They even have a PP guy that has darker tone. Pleco caves, shrimp caves discus breeders so the loose plant tanks they have uh, lots of different types of java fern the wind wind aloft and thor's hammer narrow leaf and they have broadleaf ferns so different species bovitis and nubius all these are nubius plants there's a lot of them see real hardy plants big broad leaves <laughs> waxy leaves and then bunch plants different bunch plants cypress helferi Cryptocarini, all the types, Balance, one of my favorite, Wentii, Standard, Lutea, another Standard, Lobelia cardinalis, uh, Hygrophila deformis, that's the Wisteria, Bacopa Carolinian, Standard Black Mollies. Are bold fish, bold live bearers that have a really rich, deep, velvety black color. They're in here with GMO glowfish. Got some tadpoles in here. I don't know if that's Rana Tespiana or no longer Rana. I don't know if those are bullfrogs, but they could be something else. Congo tetras. There's a big one. King of the tank right there. That's a big male. These are females here. So he's got a harem going on here. So aquascaping stores like this have things that you don't normally see at regular shops. They got the glue sticks for the plants. You got the, the pets. They're administering fertilizer. Different diffusers by Neo. Clear intakes and exhausts. Neo products. Neo CO2. I use Neo CO2 in a couple tanks. They have the leaf zone from API. They have the ADA stuff. So it's hard to find stores that have ADA in stock. So it's nice to see that there's ADA 
stuff here at Pixum. And then of course your typical Secam Flourish, Flourish Excel, a lot of people either use or don't use it. It's very polarizing. Um, standard stuff, UNS Delta filters. Azu Minion filters, I love these because they're just small and they can work on the little tiny tanks. And they're not too intrusive. A little bit of aqua clear by Flugel. And the new Pristine. Seachem Pristine. Seachem Medications. It's sad what they've done to the medication situation in the aquarium hobby. So it's hard to find a lot of medications now because of limitations from the FDA apparently. So these are great sponge filters right here. I have them in a couple tanks as well. Candy bio sponge. Got Neo soil, UNS soil. Um, UNS bigger bags of soil over here. And right now they're out, but they usually have the ADA soil. So here's another nature soil right here. And then different types of covering substrate, including pure white. They have all the tweezers and tongs and scissors and everything you can imagine. Um, different foods for fish. Hikari. Spirulina 20. Bloodworms. They still have stuff for flower horns here. Big Hikari bags. So all kinds of stuff. Hopefully we'll get some of our products in here too. For all you shrimp enthusiasts, we have a nice selection of shrimp here and microfish, like Loraris. So these are there's blue really, sunkiss, blue velvet, fire reds. Um, here's some CPDs in this tank with golden back shrimps, neoperidine. Bloody Marys, this darkest red, orange really. Caradina too, you know. Black tiger bees, tibbies, blue bolts. That's one of my favorites. Uh, crystal red. Oh, look at this. Yashuania, the uh, panda loaches. Not too many people can do well with those, so you gotta really set your parameters right to keep these guys alive. So there's a slightly mature one there and there's a juvenile which looks so attractive, the small one. So black and white. Some larger UNS tanks right there. It's one of those long bulk shelf ones, 21 gallons. Let's take a look at this Dua tank here. So here's a Dua tank that's set up. So we saw one of these at ADG. So here's one set up here. So it has the little hinge on it so you can open it. And then it has a backdrop in there. You can put all your plants on it. And a little pump to give it a waterfall. And keep frogs in there and stuff like that. So. If you don't know what that is, that is Tom Bar wood right there. So Tom Bar has some of the best aquascaping wood. Uh, I know Hip Hong has used some of those, and so has uh, Ryan Noel, Aquascaping Rhino. And <laughs> it's one of my art pieces, but it's kind of fell out of the mat right there, so we need to reframe it. It's nice to see here. Some more Tom Bar wood here. There's a little tank with Anubis Nana Petite, and a Ruby Tetra. Um, Simulans, green and neons. Some brackish monodactylus. Um, they have flickers here and they have quite a few different species. Jose Limanes, this is the gold spotted sail fin. It's a large pleco. This pleco can get close to a foot or so. With a huge fin. One of my favorite fish of all time, the cherry barb. 
So when my son was in the Philippines, he was able to collect some figure eight buffers out there. That's the figure eight right there. And um, there's some spotted ones in here too. But here they are. These are good prefer brackish water, but you can keep them in close to fresh water. Um, if you keep them well fed, they don't nip each other, but if you don't, they will nip each other so. They do have African cichlids here from both Lake Malawi and Lake Tanganyika. And uh, there's a little red crayfish here, that's really nice looking. The living stone eye here. And some sort of a catfish. Spotted some peacocks and haps. Got little baby frontosas in here. Some uh, brichard eye. They have nearite snails here too. And nearites, you can see a lot of MTS in here, and you know, Malaysian trumpet snails. But nearites are great, it's excellent algae. They're excellent eating the hard algae. And uh, there's a tank with Limia, which is one of the wild live bearers they have in here. But the problem with nearites is that they lay eggs on everything, so you have to scrape them off. <laughs> but uh, other than that, you know, they do great. They, the, the eggs don't hatch because they only hatch in salt water, the eggs. But the snails, for some reason, they can live in both fresh or salt without any problem. So you all know what butterfly loaches are, right? So butterfly loaches are pretty cool. They eat a little bit of algae, but they stick to the glass like a flounder or like a stingray almost. So they sometimes call them stingray loaches, but they are in the loach family. They come from very fast water, so they do like a lot of current. So as you can see, this tank has power head there blowing some current for these fish so they're happy now although I don't like to recommend big fish to people that are just beginning it's nice that stores still provide fish like Oscars these are young Oscars here red tigers uh, albino red tigers and uh, they get big remember they get about 13 14 inches so you got to provide for them 150 gallons or bigger Now, when they're young, you can keep black ghosts together, and they don't bother each other too much for the most part. But as they mature, sometimes they get nippy with each other. But occasionally you'll find a pair that will like each other's company and stay near each other all the time. That's the case here. There's another one here, so he's on his own. And we have Bashirs in here. Bikers. Bikers, whatever you want to call them. And a baby clown knife. We'll be fishing for these later in the year in Florida over at Lake Ida. So, hope you can watch that video when I make it. You guys don't know about peacock gudgeons. That's a very fat peacock gudgeon. Very plump. Probably full of eggs. Actually, the color of her belly looks like she's full of eggs. Those are neon tetras. Let's see if we can get a close up of one of these. Yeah, they're a little shy today. This is what I call the aquarium staple. Aliatus cori, Aeneas green, and Aeneas albino. Nowadays you can also find stir buys in the common mixes. And sometimes pandas. Quarries are good to have to eat up some leftover food that falls in the dirt. And they're just cute, fun to watch. You guys familiar with the Chinese hyphen shark? So this is actually a type of carp, Mixoprinus. So they look amazing as juveniles like this. And this is probably the way I will paint this fish. There's some gold dojos swimming around. Dustin's favorite fish. But these, these are gorgeous fish. They're beautiful. Right now they're small. These are about three and a half inches, maybe close to four inches. They have this really nice big fin. But as they grow bigger, they get they lose the pattern on their body and their fin gets smaller. And then they look like a standard food cart. So if you're going to get one of these, make sure you know what their future is. And the other thing about their future is they will grow 
to approximately two and a half feet. And our best kept in a pond outdoors. So don't buy them if you have a small tank. They don't need heaters, that's a good thing. Because they are mountain fish from China. And um, make sure that you uh, plan accordingly if you're going to get these fish. You can keep them with koi, that's a good thing. Goldfish and koi. And dojos, dojos can be kept out there too. These golden dojos get quite big, a lot bigger than the standard dojos. It's going to get over 8 inches. So I'll paint both of these fish. I know that'll make Dustin happy over at Dustin's plants, Dustin's aquariums. So here's your typical picotia. This is the clown picotia. This is a common one. It's still a very desirable fish. It doesn't get very big, under four inches. It has a nice pattern, and I will be painting it. So we're here at Pet Zone. Taking a look at them. So there's a side view, and then if we go down the wall here, there's one in the wall. So this fish is a South American native, I believe Colombia. Um, decent algae eater. Fairly peaceful, doesn't get very big, like I said. There's another one right here. There's up. One right there. See the pattern. And it's key to look at the eyes when you're painting stuff. You want to emulate the eyes as best as you can. This is a tetra called a blind cave tetra. This is an Astyanax species, so this is related to the Mexican tetra. And in fact, it might be a blind version of the Mexican tetra. So these are well fed, as you can see, but they don't have any eyes. Because in nature, these are found deep in caves. They're still able to detect things with their lateral line, and they do fine when there's light on, but they're adapted to perfect darkness. So the painting I'll be doing of these is going to be them in a cave. They do get kind of nippy, so be careful if you keep them with long fin fish or, you know, delicate species. So last and not least, let's take a look at some of their setups here. So, here's a nice sweeping setup with tombar wood on top, some floating plants, some hygrophila, some cryptocrine, some philictricoides, like styrogyne right there, and some more cryptocrine in the back. I'm not 100% sure what that is, but it's beautiful. Some floating plants. Yeah, look at this lighting here. That's amazing. This tank here is uh, needle leaf java. It's that rare stuff. That's the true needle leaf right there. And a lot of moss is growing. And then for Christmas time, they had the little Christmas wreath around here. Here's some Alternanthera, some more cryptic, I mean, uh, calyptic ladies. Look at this moss, it's beautiful. They use CO2 in these tanks. This is neat, it has one of those uh, twisted root bikini trees. <laughs> yeah. Coming out, you can see the roots are part of the escape. And this is beautiful right here. Look at that. This is like what we saw over at Hip Pong's little uh, backyard retreat. All right, so Roger left the building to go get some coffee, but this is Pascal. How long have you been working here, Pascal? Uh, almost two years now, yeah. And uh, how do you like it over here? It's pretty good. It's uh, good vibes all around. It's a good team, good people. Yep, uh, I've, I've known Roger since he was a kid. So. Really? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I've known, I was friends with his dad. Oh, for sure. And uh, can you tell us how long this store has here, been here? Uh, I would say approximately eight, eight years, maybe nine years. Yeah. For a while, they had another gallery called Hakai. Exactly. And, and that was uh, in Liberty Station. yeah, Liberty Station, which is like a tourist area in San Diego, but they had to close it down. The COVID thing didn't exactly, wasn't yeah. kind. Mm -hmm. 
but it's great. But they still have you know a lot of displays here, like some real cool, interesting ideas you can do here. Um, Keep your eye out because we might be looking for another Akai location, anyways. Yeah, that'd be great. You know, um, and I've seen Roger at a few of the Aquashellas that I uh, that I uh, host, and uh, so it's nice to see him out there, both for the flower horns and for the plants. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, now, what's your favorite stuff? Um, uh, I'm a geek for like uh, nano tank type stuff. So yeah. Smaller environments. I think it's easier to get a whole bunch of nano tanks than to yeah. do these big. Giant that, that, tanks. That's what really tickles my brain. Like, how, mm -hmm. how small of an environment can you get? Yeah. You know, like how, how, like, how many like, little critters can you fit in there? You know? Well, even though this store is small, it does have a great impact. I appreciate so. that. Thank and you. we'll just say hi to Roger here. This that's is Roger. Guys, so, well, that is Pet Zone out here in Kearney Mesa or Claremont Mesa. What do you call this area? Kearney Mesa. Kearney Mesa. So. Convoy District. Convoy District, which is kind of like a, a second downtown for San Diego. So thank you, Pascal. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Roger. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. Okay, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share this video.